lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here finally with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing good. How are you? Tired. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> another long week. Yeah. But hey, I, we made it. Like, I'm here. Way to go. Way to go. Glad <laughs> way, you're here. Way, way to set the bar, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> I arrived. showed up. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that is the bar in this country these days, isn't it? Yep. Um, uh, yeah, I showed up. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. Ooh. We could talk about that. <laughs> right? <laughs> How many of your employees are like that? Not enough. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> okay. I, I need more of them to do the showing up part. <laughs> uh, fair enough. If guess I, that. I guess that's why that's the bar. <laughs> that, that's the bar, man. You showed up. Hey, I'll take it, man. That yeah. means I get to go home. Game on. Like, <laughs> yeah, just showing up is not enough in my business. Oh, it's not in mine either. But that's where the bar is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Well, it's part of it. Yeah. It'll get better. It's just. It's like I said last week. A rough couple of weeks here, and then things will get back to normal. So once you replace that, <laughs> yeah, once, once I hire some more people and get through inventory, I'll be in good shape. <laughs> cool. So we should be here next week. Yeah. I, I see no, no reason to think so. Hopefully a, more closer to the normal time, right? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Uh-huh. Um, I, although we're going to, we're still talking about moving to Friday, right? Yeah. I think, I think Friday will be our new day going forward here at least soon. So by that standard, we're only a day late. True. <laughs> Uh, if, remember, if we're making that the standard <laughs> when we got the uh atticus finch award for excellence in communication for the podcast from the libertarian party of alabama a few years back yeah. and in the introduction to us um the uh lpa chair at the time said um that they did 39 podcasts last year and i remember <laughs> i remember getting up at the microphone and being like, yeah, we're a weekly podcast, so we only missed a quarter <laughs> of our recordings. <laughs> of our recordings in the last. Year. Oh gosh, uh, we've gotten better since then. That was we, a wake up call. Yeah, we yeah we have gotten better <laughs> since then. We strive to get something out every week. Yeah, I mean, we still don't succeed in that, but well, we're life is hard, though. man. <laughs> Dude, well, yeah, I mean, this is just kind of a, a like I said, we have real jobs. <laughs> yeah. So. If anybody wants to pay me enough to not have to do my other job and just do this, I promise we'll be more consistent and better prepared. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> that goes double for me. Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. Contact me anytime. All right. Um, so there was some legislation in Alabama. Somebody brought this up to me at work. I wasn't even aware. Um, as many of the listeners may know, Actually, may, maybe not. I don't even remember if we were doing... No, we weren't doing it, the podcast at the time. So I ran for a uh, board of education. Oh, we were totally doing the podcast then. No, that was 2018. You we sure? started the podcast in 2019. Yeah, because it was okay. an off-year election that I ran, wasn't it? I, th- I think it was an off-year election. Yeah, yeah, that was 2018. It wasn't 2022. Okay. Well, maybe we weren't doing the podcast then. Yeah. I, don't I, think, I thought we were, but maybe not. I don't think we were. I, I don't... don't it. Whatever. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, you ran for office. I, I ran for office. How did that one go? Of, <laughs> I got uh, one out of six people who actually voted. <laughs> actually voted. Voted for me. Yeah. The rest of them voted straight ticket. <sighs> Dude, we, I was talking Which about- Which was like two-thirds of the voting populace in our county, straight ticket. Yeah, the straight ticket voting, man, that's really got to go. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's oh, it's horrible. So I, I got 6% of the vote, but that's not bad for somebody running as a libertarian in a three-way race in this county. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so. I, didn't, I didn't feel like it was a failure. <coughs> and I got to get yeah. in front of people and talk a few times. And this is one of the things that I talked about. And uh, I had so many challenges about it when I was done. Oh, yeah. Because people had weird ideas of what it was that I was trying to promote. Mm-hmm. Which was school choice. Yeah. Um, and all I was saying is that uh, that any student should be able to attend any public school that they can get to. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, um, it's been a week or two ago, but I had an employee that's had her um, 
both one of her kids is having issues at the school that they go to. Um, and, and I got to talking to her about, it's like, man, like, like if Mike had won and like had gotten what he wanted done for school board, like that wouldn't be a problem for you. You could, your son could go to any school you drive him to in Baldwin County. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't have gotten done what I wanted done. No, but certainly I, I would have been yeah. the lone voice pushing for that at the time. Yeah. But we got lucky uh, here in Alabama and had it done at the state level. So, so, so is it, did it pass? Yep. Yeah. It's been signed by uh, KIV and everything. So when will it take effect? Uh, 2025. Hey, that's still pretty cool though. Mm-hmm. So is it like what we were proposing? Like, so if you nope. want, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, dang it. Like, I was getting really excited. You got me all bored. I was like, man, like, this is, this is really happening. No, it, this is a case of government can't relinquish control. Okay. Um, so the, <coughs> the Choose Act is what it's, what it's called here in Alabama. Um, and they're kind of phasing it in. So at the beginning, uh, the eligible students um, are children of families that are less than 300% of the federal poverty level, three times the level of the federal poverty level. Okay. Um, okay, so in terms of income, roughly speaking, if it's uh, a parent and child and they're the only people in the household, two, two-party household, yeah. um, then it's roughly $60,000 a year. Uh, three-person household, it's seventy five, and four-person household, it's ninety. Okay. So... Um, and these families have an option to take their kids to a different school? Yeah, to attend other approved schools, and there's an approval process through the state and so mm. on and so on. Sounds like a lot of red tape. Yeah, um, and the way it works is uh, they don't they don't just get to go there. Um, they get a um, an education savings account through the state. Okay. And... I mean, there's some good sides to this. So it's $7,000 per student in the education savings account Yeah. Uh, to um, pay for educational expenses, uh, whether that be private school tuition. Um, as I understand it, I didn't know this before, but um, public schools will allow you to attend out of district, but they charge an additional fee. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it could be to pay for that additional fee, which I guess would also be tuition. Um, books, tutoring, you know, like a, just a bunch of education Stuff you may need, expenses. Yeah. 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 Um, now the upside of the educational savings account is that they're not just like giving the money to the parents. So, yeah. cause the first thing I thought when I heard about this is like, well, you just, there's no reason for any parent that's eligible not to take their kid to the next nearest school. Right. If they get seven grand a year just for <laughs> taking their kid to another school. Yeah. Um, since it has to pay, be paid directly to the education, the provider of the books or the tutoring or the the school itself or whatever, yeah. um, at least they've prevented that possibility. Yeah. Right. Um, however, there's still plenty more room for corruption in this thing. Yeah. So, uh, so it's not it, it's not exactly school choice in the sense that I meant it, where. I just said I just meant that you could you should be able to register your um, your student at any school that you wanted that you could provide transport to. Yeah. Now I did have people t- come to me after speaking events and say you just want buses running all over the county. You can't <laughs> afford that. It's like no, I never said anything like that. Why in the world would you think I th- I, I yeah. meant that the county should provide students transport to any school that they want. Yeah, I, that, that seems ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, and there were some provisions within the bill to address this issue, although I think it's a non-issue, but it's a really important issue for um, schools in Alabama, both at the high school and college level, which is what about sports? Yeah. Yeah. So they maintain eligibility, et cetera. There's some limitations in that. And you know, the most common thing that was said to me after these speaking engagements is that, well, you would just have one school get all the best football players and win state every year. I'm like, well, no. Yeah, that, that's, that's not how the market works in reality. Yeah. Because, I mean, what I mean, will happen is, is the better players 
may choose to go to a certain school, but then a bunch of those players are going to choose to go to a different school because they're going to want to play. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, your you, three you best will, quarterbacks are not going to all go to the same high school. Yeah, they can't uh-huh. because they're all going to sit the uh, – two of them are going to sit the bench. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing is that if you if you are an, uh, one of the elite high school athletes, you want to stand out because you're looking for – Especially for, in high school. Yeah, you're looking for college recruiters to say, oh, man, that guy. Yeah. Um, so – you don't want to be at the school where all the other best players are anyway. You want to, you, you yeah. you're incentivized to be a big fish in a little pond. Exactly. So, but it, to me, this is totally irrelevant anyway. <laughs> like, well, this has nothing to do. With I mean, it. there will be a lot of students that'll, mm-hmm. that'll make decisions on where they go to school for sports. Yeah. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're serious about pursuing college, yeah. You know, I mean, they, they should make some decisions around that. You actually have more of a problem with that with private schools. Really? Uh, private yeah. schools will waive tuitions for good athletes. athletes to come play at their school instead of the public school and things like that. So you, you actually yeah. have more trouble with that with private schools than you do between public schools. Yeah. Um, but again, to me, like, I don't care about the sports. Yeah. That's not the point. Yeah. And <laughs> the... Um, well, Go ahead. I was just going to say, like situations like my friend is in, where she's got a kid that's not that's not performing as well in the school that the kid is at now as it did as the kid did in a different school. Mm-hmm. And I mean, clear it's it's clearly an issue with the school. The kid needs to go to a different school. But I mean, right, as things stand right now, that's not an option. Yeah. Um. It's it's. Crazy. Yeah, of course, one of the other issues I got was that um, everybody will go to the best school. Yeah. And then the people that just can't get transportation will be stuck at crappy schools. And I was like, yeah, but, yeah, but class this, size matters. I was fixing to say, that's that's the flip side to that mm-hmm. is, yeah, so then that crappy school all of a sudden has half as the number of students in it. And the education will get better when there's less students in the class, Fewer. when the class size is smaller, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Sorry, that's one of those English things that gets me. <laughs> that bothers you. Yeah, yeah, less and fewer. If you less. can count it, it's fewer. If huh? they're indivisible entities, it's fewer. Uh. I mean, I guess humans are technically divisible. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you understand what I mean, I hope. I do. Um, which is why I love Publix. This is an, an interesting little aside. So almost every grocery store or uh, retail store, big retail store, um, has the express lane. And almost all of them say 10, ten or 15 or 10 whatever. 10 items or less. Yeah. Publix actually does it correctly, and it says whatever the number is or fewer. <laughs> or fewer, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, way to go. So I I, <laughs> so, so, so I always so, comment on it when I go through that lane, too. And people are like, what? I didn't know that was a rule. I'm like, yeah, that's because education sucks. <laughs> well, this is why Choose Act is so good. <laughs> right? Um, it just, is. So I have some... Complaints about this, obviously, but uh, it is a step in the right direction. It at least gives um, parents a little bit more control over the the education of their children. Yeah. Um, and it gives it gives parents that might otherwise be left behind in this uh, some resources to do this with, which yeah. I don't necessarily have a problem with. I have a problem with the state providing it, but yeah, you know, given um, the current situation of things yeah given the current situation it's certainly an improvement to allow um poor students that are live in poorer areas or come from poorer families to get out of the school district that they're in and go to a better school if they're yeah if there's somebody who's capable and so i have problems with the accreditation though process through the state like this is one of those things where the market will decide and in fact I, i just read an article recently about a um so West Virginia has done a school choice kind of thing with ESA uh, um, education savings accounts like this yeah. also. And they've had uh, a bunch of private schools fail. Really? And they're like, oh, this is such a problem. See what happens. See how terrible this is. All these schools fail. I'm like, no, no that's the market at work. Yeah. Like, there you go. Bad schools failed. Now more money will go to good schools. Exactly. I mean, that's that's what it is. Like yeah. I say, that's, this is so schools will fail. Yeah. In this, and that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
This is not a problem with the system. The, the problem with the system is that public schools never fail. Yeah. It doesn't matter how bad they are. And in fact, they're in, in incentivized in a lot of ways to do worse because the worse they do, the more money they get. Then they can get more resources. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, I, um, they may have changed this, and I didn't check it before the podcast, but at least when um, I was running for Board of Education, there is uh, like funding of schools in the public school system is partially based on the number of students. Yeah. So... Um, good schools that draw more students will get more money and there's an incentive there to draw more students to get more money, especially in this kind of situation where, where they have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a problem with that though, too. Like I do worry, especially since this is all right, there's a couple of things. First off with the $7,000 per student ESA, yeah, $7,000 per student per year. Yeah. Um, you have just set a floor to tuition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's part of the reason tuition in college is so high. Exactly. Is, yeah. What, what, <coughs> sorry. Once you start setting that floor, like that's, <laughs> that's the price. <laughs> yeah. You get guaranteed money from the government, whatever that amount is. That's, there's no sense that's in anybody charging price. less than that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that may become, I mean, public schools will at least be regulated, I suppose, by the state still, by the same entity. So they may not raise their out-of-district additional costs or whatever. But private schools, you can pretty much guarantee that the le- the least tuition any of them will charge is $7,000 a year. Yeah. Um, and there were plenty that charged less than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that I I worry that you run into the same problem that, that they've had with colleges that with all this government money available, then the goal is just to draw as many students as possible. And the way colleges have opted to do that is through amenities. And I can see high schools doing the same things. So not improving their education system, but offering better food and more like pools and workout rooms and like who knows what else, uh, extracurriculars that aren't necessarily education based that'll draw people in those kind of things. So that's a concern also. Um, As far as the accreditation process through the state, I just don't think it's necessary going back to poor schools failing. Um, I think that people underestimate the desire for parents to provide the best for their kids. Yeah. You don't need a state to tell you which schools are good and which schools aren't. Like the parents can figure that out on their own. Oh yeah. They don't want to send their kids to bed. They're not going to pull their kid out of public school to send their kid to a worse school. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Even for the money. <laughs> even or, or even if they have a nice cafeteria, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> You start to wonder about some of those things, but (laughs) there is a little bit more. I mean, so college students are making the choices purely on their own. So those amenities will be more of a draw to a college student. Well, not purely on their own, but But they're more independent in making their school choice than high school kids. Oh, yeah. Um, High school kids, it's going to be the parents mostly that are making the decisions. College kids, it's going to be the students mostly that are making the decisions. So, yes, the amenities probably don't matter as much. Yeah. Um, at the high school level, but it doesn't prevent it from being the draw. And, yeah. you know, of course, students, students are kids are still kids. Oh, yeah. Last so, time I checked. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I do think that they kind of uh, underestimate the ability of the, of the parent to make the determination for themselves what's best for their kid. Yeah. That bothers me, too. But like the bulk of this, I guess, is that you, you still have um, a situation where um, government is controlling this. It's called the Choose Act, but the government couldn't give up control, and it's just another situation where the the answer isn't actually to make more legislation; it's to make less. Right? <laughs> it's you know remove government from the process, not to add more layers of government to the process. So, yeah, and that's really what it sounds like. This bill has done is like they've added all of these new stipulations. And they're letting you do something a little different, but there's all these stipulations on top of it. Mm-hmm. When the correct thing would have done is whatever legislation says you can't go to whatever school you want, remove that. Exactly. Like that would have been the like correct answer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it still leaves a lot of opportunities for corruption. Yeah. Uh, like I said, they did take away the. They didn't make it easy for parents to just do this so that they could get an extra seven grand a year because you can't pay the parents or the students directly. Yeah. Um, 
but you still <coughs> so uh, a a couple of opportunities for corruption in this um cuz it's still a lot of money from the state oh yeah like it, it's it's tax money from the state going into this program yeah um the state can contract uh private companies for services in order to execute the act yeah which means that they can still pay off their cronies mm -hmm. their buddies to do certain things using state money to do it yeah. um and uh i mean that's the big one but there's you know there's still opportunities of course for parents to contract friends of theirs um and maybe even counter contract each other to do homeschooling and, you know, things yeah. like that so that they're not paying themselves, but they're paying each other. Yeah. Um, and those kind of things. I'm not nearly as concerned about that though, as I am about just the, the state, um, the politically connected getting contracts to do things as part of this act and, oh, you yeah. know, for friends to be paid off. Um, <laughs> There's some opportunity, though, here for uh, the clever entrepreneur um, starting small private schools to draw students in. Yeah. Uh, like, if I knew enough people, I, like, I would like to do that. Yeah. I would love to start a school for <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> for kids. Like, let me, let me give you some real education here. Um, like, prepare you for college. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the real world. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I don't think that this was the right move exactly, but I think it's a move in the right direction. Yeah. At least it's a step forward. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm sure there will be a lot of criticisms going forward. Yeah. And, um, uh, some of them will be legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be interesting to follow and kind of see where we end up with mm -hmm. it and see, see if things do get better. Yeah. Um, so then there was a, uh, a house federal moving to the federal level. All right. Um, there was a house bill, uh, passed, um, demanding that bite dance divest itself from TikTok. Did it pass both houses? To my knowledge, it has not gone through the Senate yet. As okay. of Thursday, today's Saturday. I didn't yeah. check yesterday, but as of Thursday, it had not yeah. passed the Senate. Yeah, I know. Um, I knew Biden said he would sign it if it made it through, but I didn't. I knew it was hung up somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot of confidence that like 70 senators would It'll, vote yes. So I, I it feel would like pass it, the Senate if it yeah. if it's raised there. Yeah. Um, this is terrible <laughs> and ridiculous. Uh, oh come on! You're, you're just you're you're a Chinese spy. That's what you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's that's my my concern is that the Chinese government will no longer get access to uh, dance videos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, I mean it, there is a little bit more to it than that, of course. No, there the, absolutely is. But it is uh, a blatant violation of the First Amendment. Yeah. Um, it is a blatant violation of the First Amendment. Not so much abridging freedom of speech, but abridging freedom of the press. Yeah. Because the press does not mean journalists. <coughs> I mean, at the time that this was written, the press meant the printing press. It meant the ability to reproduce and distribute content. That the Congress shall make no law abridging the ability to reproduce and distribute content. Yeah. And that's literally what this platform is. That's all it does. Yeah. I mean, there's a little more to it than that with the algorithms and stuff, but go ahead, but, tell me. I mean, it's just you know, I mean, the the argument is is that the Chinese are just feeding us garbage as far as like content goes, and just like trying to dumb down the society. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying we need to ban TikTok, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so don't take me wrong. But that's the argument from the other side. Um, the other argument I've heard is that well. That the Chinese don't let U.S. companies just sell apps in their country, so why should we let them do that? I've also the heard, Chinese are killing their babies. We should definitely do that. Well, I mean, you know, so come on, it's the same kind of argument. Well, I was gonna say another thing that I've heard. Let's a be lot, more like China. Well, yeah. The, well, that goes to the other thing that I've heard a lot is you know um, we shouldn't be letting the Chinese come in come to this country and buy property because they won't let us come over to their country and buy property. I'm like. Mm. But all I want to say is like, yeah, like we're a free country. 
Yeah. They're not. Like, I mean, so yeah, I don't I don't understand like the arguments like, oh, so they're like this totalitarian regime, like, so that's what we should be too. Mm-hmm. Like Well, I mean, that was the argument during COVID. It was. Well, and like I say, I mean it, they did it during COVID, so mm-hmm. um Well, uh what I keep hearing is that there's you know, due to intelligence laws in China um, China could demand that ByteDance provide all U.S. user data to the uh, Communist Party of China, and that this is a national security threat. Yeah. Somebody uh, tell me why. Well, I, I got news for you. Uh-huh. We're doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, all I this mean, information that's... is widely available. It's not like, unless you only use TikTok, yeah. the Chinese government has other ways to get that exact same data. Well, yeah. And like I say, Facebook and all of these other groups, they're doing the same thing and mm-hmm. they're turning that crap right over to the federal government. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, so it's it's no different. The difference is, is the Chinese have it, not us. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what the... And, well, it's not even about that. They don't really... That's not... It's a smokescreen. You think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or a red herring, whatever the okay. appropriate term would be. Yeah. Um, that's not really the so issue. So then what's really going on here? I, I think what's really going on is that the U.S. government doesn't have any control over TikTok. Ah. The U.S. government has some control over Instagram and Facebook well, and Twitter or X, you, whatever. You make a good point there because that... And we do have an election around the corner here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you're right, uh, because it, it's been, it's kind of been hammered out. These these social media companies have a lot of power when it comes to just the algorithms they use and the information they kind of send you to kind of help you make decisions and whatnot. Like, there's a lot of control there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's definitely, like I say... That in the hands of the Chinese is not something that we want, that the U.S. wants. Yeah, I suppose. But seriously, I, so I don't I've know. Only had Donald, one Trump, person- Donald Trump won an election on Twitter. Like, I'm That's just true. saying. Like, um, And the powers that be don't want that to happen again. And they certainly don't want the Chinese using a weapon like that. Yeah, I don't know that it's that much of a weapon. I don't think it's that influential. You say that he won an election on Twitter. I mean, Twitter certainly allowed him to bypass the press that was trying to gatekeep. Yeah. No, that's true. But it's not like he didn't have a following or support. And it's not like he wouldn't have built it without Twitter. He would have just found some other way around the press. I mean, the problem there was the press, not Twitter. No, Uh, 100%. I agree with that. You know, it was, it was, the press that was trying to censor and eliminate him. It wasn't Twitter. Yeah. I mean, at some point they weren't trying to eliminate him. They were trying to censor him and make him look bad. He was still good TV. I I shouldn't say it like that. They didn't want him on TV. They did want him on TV, but they wanted him to, well, I'll tell you, they wanted to control the opinion of him. He's on TV a lot less now. Yeah. Um, that may change as we go into this next, uh, or we get closer here. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I remember <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember like 2016, like they were airing his speeches all over the place. Yeah. Like you, you could, you could turn on the TV, flip a few channels and find the Trump speech all the time. Yeah. Until that at some point they not, would interrupt it and say, it is irresponsible for us to carry well, all this disinformation. They didn't really do that in 2016 though. I guess that's true. Um, I don't really remember. It, it, that happened after he was elected where yeah. they started trying to like fact check in real time, mm-hmm. like all of that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and it's persisted, but now they just don't play him that much. Yeah. I mean, it's not to say they never play him, but it ain't like it was, I promise. Well, there's a couple of things that I think are involved in this. Now, first off, I do want to be fair and and say that there was one person has been able to give me a legitimate reason that the Communist Party of China getting access to TikTok user data could be a security threat. Okay. Um, And it's blackmail. Yeah. No, I Uh, agree with that. The, um, you know, essentially you sign over access to these apps through the um, EULA's to access everything on your phone. Nobody yeah. ever reads this stuff. And in fact, the longer the EULA, the less likely people are to read it. Oh yeah. People yeah. aren't reading that. Um, so with access to photos and everything else that even though the government has said that you can't use TikTok on your personal phone 
or I mean, sorry, on your government issue phone. Some people are going to carry a second phone where they can do it. Also, they have access to your wife's data, potentially your kid's data, yeah. which can be used for blackmail. Yeah. Uh, now, I have always said I am way more concerned with my own government <laughs> doing that to me than the <laughs> Communist Party of China doing that to me. <laughs> yeah. But I can see where that could be a potential security threat. Yeah. Um, the uh, I, I think that the real issue here, actually, um, is the election. And at least a portion of that is the uh, Israel-Palestine situation. Okay. And because that is the most divisive issue within the Democrat Party. Oh, without question. And TikTok is mostly younger people who are more likely to support Palestine. And there's been studies that have shown that the pro-Palestine data on TikTok uh, far outweighs pro-Israel data on TikTok. Yeah, I, um, I would believe that. And that could have a huge impact on the support for Joe Biden among yeah. among younger people. Yeah. Now, most people, I think, are probably not voting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm sure that there's... And I, I would bet that if you did the same kind of research on like Facebook, you would find pro-Israel to be far more prevalent than pro-Palestine because it's generally older people. Yeah. This is a generational issue more than anything. Yeah. Um, but it is a, a, an incredibly divisive issue for the Democrat party. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. And it just, it, it should tell you though, something that's interesting about our, our political system here. Um, cause that, the Russian elections are going on right now. Oh yeah. They're all weekend, right? Yep. Um, they started yesterday. They run through tomorrow. Um, so one of the big things out there has been, um, the candidates available on the ballot have been severely limited by the ruling regime in Russia. Yeah. Cause there's, I don't remember. There's like six candidates, something like that. Yeah. Well, the only one that had a chance to win is dead. So. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Navalny ran for mayor of I wonder if people know this. So Navalny ran for mayor of Moscow, which is actually generally more progressive, more um, left-leaning than most of the rest of the country, and uh, still only got a tiny percentage of the vote. I think it was less than 20% of the really? vote. Wow. Um, and uh, more recent polls about him <laughs> in Russia have shown that his uh, that he only had support of like 1% of the population. I mean, yeah. he was not... He was way more popular in the West Outside. than he was in Russia. Well, I've just, it's funny because I've heard that, that <clears throat> statement that I just made made all over the mainstream news. Oh, no. That's yeah, the absolutely only, ridiculous. Well, no, and I laugh he every time. no chance. I laugh every time I hear it because <clears throat> I'm just like, that's, that's just blatantly not true. You know, the biggest threat to, this is another interesting, um, in, in respect to history, uh, the biggest threat to Putin's uh, Putin and Putin's party in Russia is the communist party in Russia. Really? Yes. That's the yeah. next biggest party. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. They're his, <laughs> um, what's the word that we're using for the people that we don't, they're the countries that we don't like here. They're, um, I, I, antagonists is the only thing I can think of, but that's not what I mean. Yeah. They're his biggest rival. Like, yeah. They are people. Uh, so there's a movement of people that want to go back to communism. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I figured after surviving a, that, I mean, there's a movement for that here. So I'm not, <laughs> I mean, I'm not like shocked, yeah. but, but I did figure after, you know, escaping it, <laughs> that yeah. they might not want to go back to it. They might be younger people too. I don't know. They it might be. not be people wanting to go back to it. It might be people that think it sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that weren't alive when it was going on. Yeah. I mean, it has been 30 years. It has been. I mean, that that, that checks out. Like, yeah. that that would make some sense. Uh, but anyway, the, <laughs> what, the point I was going to make is that you only have two choices here. Yeah. And uh, they're carefully considered. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So if you're, when you're, when we vote um, in November, the only two candidates that have a possibility of winning, most likely... 
are both pro war. Yep. And they are absolutely both on board for Israel. war uh, in Israel against Gaza. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a stark distinction that, that we really need to make apparent. Yeah. Is that, that if you're against what's going on in Israel right now, mm-hmm. there's not a candidate that supports you. Yeah. There's no representation there's of, no, of the major candidates. Anyway. Of the major candidates. Yeah. And particularly. I mean, you the, can vote for Jill Stein. You can vote for the libertarian candidate, whoever it's going to be. It's almost certainly going to be somebody that's against the war in Gaza. But yeah. I mean, that's like I say, that's really it. And the whole two parties to represent, I mean, it's just, it's a farce. And it, what, what kills me about it the most is that the government like is so complicit in the duopoly. Yeah. Like, and there's going to be some people saying out there right now saying, Oh, you just think, you think that the politics is better in Russia? No. Yeah. That's not my point. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> my point is it sucks here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, like, well, uh, you know, the point isn't that, well, their system is better. The yeah. point, in fact, I don't care about their system. Yeah. I don't have to live under it. I don't so. have to. Uh, yeah. I don't have to live. I don't under have it. to live next to it. That's not my vote. <laughs> I don't care. My point is that the system here is a problem and it's yeah. my system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, there, and then on the Ukraine issue, uh, you still have some two people that are pro-war. Trump is slightly less warmongery. Well, he's changed his <laughs> tune since he left office. But a lot of yeah, what's going he, on in Ukraine right now is because of him. Yeah, it's because he, he allowed shipments of weapons. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what he thought would actually, I don't think that he thought forward what would happen. It was just like, oh, this is a good deal for American businesses, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Because right. that's how he... That made is decisions. How he, yeah. Um, and then uh, maybe you have RFKJ, and he's slightly less warmongery. <laughs> yeah. But even him, he's he's on board with the war in Israel. I was going to say, he's all in for Israel. So, like I say, there's that. that's not representative. This is, this is yeah. an unavoidable... This is... Yeah. yeah. No matter who you vote for, they're going to keep selling weapons to Israel. Yeah. And while there is a lot of support in this country, because the argument, the argument I can hear some people making is, well, there's so much support in this country for Israel. That's the reason there's not a, another representation. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of support for Israel in this country. That's just kind of what it is. But it's not absolute. Like yeah. there are a lot of people who are where me and you are, where it's not that we necessarily are pro. I mean, it's not that I'm anti-Palestinian. It's just like we need to come to a reasonable solution here yeah well Um, yeah i mean killing people is not the answer yeah um which hopefully we're starting to learn in ukraine but it's hard to tell no it's very hard to tell um and uh, yeah i'm not i'm not anti-israel now i have some really major criticisms for the israeli government yeah um but uh like i don't have a problem with the existence of a jewish state and so yeah, forth absolutely. i don't think it has a right to exist because states don't have rights i will say that over <laughs> and over again yeah um but i don't have a problem with it you know <laughs> with israel being there uh the the problem is the human rights record with dealing with the palestinians those yeah. people are either a part of your country or they're not if they're not let them go if they are give them rights yeah that's that's how simple this this question is really yeah in terms of like the moral oh, stance on, on the Israeli question. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, oh, I had something and I lost it. It just oh, slipped right man. away. That's a shame because I felt like it was going to be good. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, I was really ranting well there. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, what was it? Oh, no, I can't think of what I was going to say. Oh, well. Um, I, that's, a, I guess, a good time. Maybe it'll come to me as I talk about the next thing. Because... Yeah. Uh, on that same line, um, you remember South Dakota Governor Christy Nome? Yeah. All yeah. right. She's really popular. During COVID. Uh, yeah, among the conservatives during COVID because she never placed any restrictions, no requirements, no mandates, no restrictions. Unlike DeSantis who did and then like... Well, at least he got, rolled it back. He, he got good on it, but... Yeah. Yeah, Nome was good the whole time, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but she just signed into law... A bill criminalizing anti-Semitism. Oh, I did hear. That was her? I didn't realize that yeah. was her. Um, oh, what a shame. Criminalizing anti-Semitism, and it is the the version of anti-Semitism that we've seen pushed around this country 
at least since before Trump's presidency, um, that includes any criticism of the Israeli government as anti-Semitism. Hmm. So, so it's a good thing we don't live in South Dakota. Yeah, even the yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, we broadcast there though. Shh. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, watch my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so even even the good Republicans suck. Uh, Just like you. the good Democrats, even the good <laughs> Democrats suck, like RFK. Jay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just, yeah, there's just no... Well, it's the no reason escaping. you can't depend on the two-party system. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it's got to be bigger than that. It, the, the, the choices have to be bigger than just two. Yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, you can be like the libertarians. We're right about everything, but... <laughs> exactly. I yeah. am, um, I guess, officially going to be uh, an alternate delegate in D.C. in May. Oh, nice. So um, I talked to our state chair... Yeah. Yesterday or the oh, day wow. before. <laughs> so you're just now handling that. Well, no. Um, I, I sent him a text right before the uh, the state convention. Convention. Yeah. He didn't respond. I imagine he was pretty busy. Um, but when I talked to him yesterday, he was like, "Oh yeah, you're already on the list. You sent me that message saying that you wanted to be a delegate, so I put you <laughs> up as an alternate um, yeah. when we were at the convention." And I was like, "Oh." Okay. Well, you're awesome. <laughs> he, Thanks. He is very on top of things. Yeah, he is. So. <laughs> Uh, I, but I didn't know. I had to talk to him first. Yeah. So uh, anyway, that hasn't been submitted yet. I knew I had some time still. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm on the list. And everybody that says that they're going to show up when they go to the state convention, they're like, yeah, I'm going to be a delegate oh, at yeah. National. I'm de- definitely going to D.C. Like half of them Half of them go. will show. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think it'll so, be an issue. Yeah. I wish I could make it. Um yeah, I do too. I, yeah, like DC I said, DC is a fun city. Anyway, never been to DC. I wouldn't mind going really? sometime. No, I never went. Like uh, your brother kept your, trying. Your to... hobby is talking about <laughs> American politics, and you've yeah. never been to the I've, center of. I've never been of the federal government. No, your brother tried for years, to, and I wanted to go. It just never worked out. Yeah. So, for the record, my there. brother lived in D.C. for like eight years or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and he know he knew the city well. He he'd definitely be the person to go with. Um, like I say, I just yeah, I, especially at that time. Uh, yeah, back then for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I missed opportunity, man. <laughs> before he quit drinking, before he had kids. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh well. Man, no, it didn't come back to me, whatever it was that I had to say about that. Yeah. But uh, the point is that uh, banning TikTok is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is on so many levels. Like, I mean, it's to me, that's one of the most anti-American things you can want to do. Mm-hmm. Not not just because, not just to, the ban, like the whole idea of banning things is just un-American yeah. to or me. force the sale of a company. Or yeah, because whatever. that's what they're actually pushing yeah. for is they want another company to buy it and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, mm-hmm. like I say, the, the, the point stands. Like banning stuff is just not American. Yeah. Um, I was talking to the tech guy at my office too. I was like, well, even if they, because what it does is it actually bans the app in... In the app store. In, yeah, in the app stores. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, can't you just then like not get the app and just go straight to it on your web browser on your phone? Ah. Uh, and he said, no, all that's done. All that stuff's done through IP. They can just shut off any IPs that lead to TikTok. In yeah. This country. And because so, my, because well, my initial reaction was if you already have the app, you'd be good, mm-hmm. but that's not how it works either. Like, I guess they still it get gets some, removed. It, right? Yeah. Yeah, it will. I mean, it may still show up at as least a, in i uh, in Apple. I don't know how yeah. that works with Google. Um, I don't know how. I've never owned a. I've only had an Apple. Yeah. Um, but like I say, but the all the support and stuff runs through the the store. So like I say, if they remove it from the store, it's not going to work on your phone. Hmm. So at least that's my understanding. Well, um, I guess I really need to get on, um, re carpeting these other pads for the. <laughs> cat tree in the in the back of my house in front of the window because i got a new one and the the little platforms are smaller yeah my cats don't use it they don't want fact, nothing to do with it <laughs> in fact the one has just climbed on the one next door so that he can get this like oblique angle through the window without having to get on the new platform yeah they, they <laughs> so, want nothing to do with that thing <laughs> i know i don't understand it's not that much smaller yeah which is a shame because the little platforms are shaped like fish they are that's the problem. I don't know. I, I, Your cats hate fish. 
<laughs> they definitely don't. Uh, well, well it depends on what you mean. Okay. They hate fish platforms. They are they are not disinterested in fish. They may hate them. Oh yeah. But they are not disinterested. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> well, uh, did it, my previous cat was allergic to fish meal? Really? Which made it very difficult that, to that buy. That was a problem food. finding cat food. Yeah. yeah. Just, I was that guy like in the pet food aisle in the supermarket like reading the <laughs> reading ingredients. The ingredients. Because I couldn't bring it home if it had fish meal in it. He'd get scabs all over him, and it was terrible. Um, Skin allergy. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Um, Yeah. You got anything more? I don't think so. So, uh, to summarize, Choose Act, not great, but better than what was. Yeah. Um, Better than the status quo. Yeah. TikTok ban, ridiculous. Uh, Christy Gnome. All politicians suck. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think that's a good I think, summary. I think that's a pretty that pretty well sums up. That might the, be the summary when I <laughs> when, you, when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we expect to be back next week. Um, sorry for the delay again this week. Hopefully that will stop. Yeah. Um, we will see. Yeah. We'll see. Except to live later. Hopefully my life gets better. Yeah. My work life at least. My regular life's great. Well, hopefully that gets better too. Yeah, but it's still pretty good. Okay. <laughs> if the work life gets better, everything else will be better too. <laughs> I'm sure that that's true. <laughs> All right. So uh, follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Um, not TikTok. Yeah, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> like and share, comment, subscribe, um, you know, leave reviews. You can always contact me at michael at thelibertymike.com, especially if you want to pay for the podcast. Yeah, right. Uh, I accept all donations. Actually, I really need to set something up for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, how you how you accepting them donations there, buddy? Yeah. It's, well, Can I Venmo you? Contact me and I'll let you know. <laughs> right. Figure something out. Send it all in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. I could use a Bitcoin. What I bit, definitely should have. What, what Bitcoin a year would cover this podcast? <laughs> That's absolutely true. Well, right now. <laughs> right. Um, that, you know, I, gosh, I should have bought some Bitcoin when I was planning to, when I sold my condo. Yeah. It was uh, like. Wish I bought some like when it came out. Then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, so I, we're closing up, so this is weird to keep talking about this. This is definitely something that could go on off mic, but I'm going to yeah. tell anyway. Um, so there was a guy that I used to play cards with years and years ago who, what he did was mine Bitcoin. Really? Yeah. And this is when Bitcoin was like a couple hundred bucks, maybe something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I didn't even know what Bitcoin was at that time. Yeah. Um, so this is, I don't know, this is a long, this is a while back. How long have I been here? I mean, this is probably 12 years ago, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wonder now, and he was young. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, he was like in his early 20s then. So he'd probably be in his, you know, mid 30s now. Yeah. Like, had I don't know how many Bitcoin that he'd pull that he'd mined for, and that at that time were worth a couple hundred bucks, maybe. Yeah, hopefully he held on to them. Yeah, till the right moment. Like, I just I wonder what happened to him. And like yeah. I wonder if he's just like living on an island that he bought somewhere or something. <laughs> it's, it's possible. He should. I wish he had talked me into Bitcoin if, at the time because I was skeptical. Because yeah. I'm a skeptical person. Yeah. And I was like, well, eh, I don't know about this thing. I, don't know. I remember when Bitcoin was at like five hundred a coin. Yeah. And I was like, man, like I, I considered buying one. I was like, or actually I considered buying a pair. If I was going to do it, I was going to get two and throw down the grand on this like thing that I couldn't see or touch. Mm-hmm. And it was like, man, that's like a lot of money for something that I can't like physically have. Yeah. You know, I mean, in retrospect now, like, it's like, man, like if I bought two for a grand. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not on board with Bitcoin. Um, yeah. It's going to fall again. I'm sure it will. I mean, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates too much to be a like currency. A currency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got to it's got to be stable. It's worse than and living in Venezuela. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, not that our currency is that stable, but it's, comparatively, comparatively, yes, it's but, incredibly stable. Okay. I mean, I yeah. Don't, comparatively, our currency is incredibly stable. Yeah. That's why Malay in um, Argentina stapled his currency to ours to the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Um, I mean, he could have stapled it to Bitcoin, a Bitcoin. Yeah, but that um, would have been a bad idea. But that would have been a terrible idea. You yeah. need a stable currency, and the most stable currency in the world is the U.S. dollar. Except for it keeps losing its value. Well, it does, but 
that's <laughs> controllable actually too. Just yeah. don't have a government smart enough to do it. No, nah, just enough. keep say, making the same mistake over and over again. They yeah. believe in the inflationary economy because they live in debt. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the only way to. It seems like at least that's the only way to keep all this afloat because the debt's so out of control. Like well, if we were in a deflationary economy. That huge debt that the government's carrying would just get huger. I'm not that's not already getting huger, but exponentially. Yeah, it, it would, except that the it would be easier for business. I mean, I guess the idea is that business has can plan on a two percent inflation every year. And inflation is good for business. Yeah. Um, it's bad for consumers. Yeah. Which is what we are. Deflation is am. deflation is good for consumers, but business can deal with deflation as long as it's they know. It's, yeah, as long as they can prepare for it. Yeah. Um, the problem with the Fed is that it's like it's arbitrary. It's, it's not a market. Yeah. And so anybody that complains about you know capitalism and the failure of capitalism in this country, the problem that you have to realize this is way off topic. Right at the end of the <laughs> podcast, I know, but um, the thing you have to realize is that our entire economy is based on not a free market. Yeah. That the whole monetary system is um is a controlled economy yeah which has proven over and over again to fail yeah unfortunately so, yeah all right and on that <laughs> now we weren't we trying to finish with something positive for a while like yeah well bitcoin's up <laughs> yeah, okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.